Hey, welcome, welcome back. This is Dr. Levi with your show, The Dr. Levi Show. Our show is about empowering you, educating you, and reminding you to live a life of inclusivity and living the best life that you can live. We really want you to know that your life is a manifestation of the mindful, strategic choices that you make. So be careful of the choices that you make because we want you to have a great life. And guess what? This is the new year. Six, six days into 2016. This is fantastic. So happy new year, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us. This is our, our third show. Actually, it's our fourth show, and we're really fortunate today to have on a great guest who's actually a, a good friend and an extraordinary person who's made many inroads into the world of fitness, health, and well-being. And he's also lived a life that has been focused about being healthy and reminding people that you can do it no matter what your weight, your size, your fitness level. He's actually discovered a plan that will work for anybody's life as long as they do the program systematically and consistently and with commitment. So we're going to talk to Michael Carson shortly, an extraordinary human being, someone that I really appreciate having as a part of my life. So before I talk to Mike, I want to remind you that this year, 2016, so often we talk about the resolutions that people are going to make for the year with respect to not smoking, losing weight, exercising, not drinking alcohol, taking sugar out the diet. Okay, it's great to make those resolutions, but I want to remind you as you do that, those are what I call the superficial resolutions. You also have to think about what are you going to do internally to help yourself. That can be either meditation, maybe volunteering more, but doing things outside of yourself where it's not just about you. Life is really about inclusivity, so I want you to really consider doing things that will make you a better person. So consider volunteering at the Veterans Organization, considering volunteering at a, a homeless shelter, doing something that's just not simply focused on you. And later in the show, at the end, I'll also talk about relationships because, again, yes, we want to have a healthy body and a healthy, healthy spirit, but also our relationships are also a manifestation of who we are. So if you have a wonderful relationship, you have great people in your life, guess what? Most likely you're a good person. You're a great person. If you have people in your life that are not really working for you, you don't feel happy, you don't feel uplifted, you don't feel good about you, you don't feel like someone's looking out for you, guess what? Well, make a change. Maybe you have to love them from a distance. Maybe you have to make a decision. You have to be fearless to say, well, I, I love myself more than I love you to make me feel less than. So we want to really look at that also. So we'll talk about that also. And we'll talk about my 10 superfoods for the year. I think if you add these to your diet, you'll not only lose weight, you'll decrease your risk for different forms of cancer. You'll feel good about yourself. You'll sleep better, increase your libido, increase your memory, all of these things so you can have a phenomenal, listen at this, a phenomenal 2016. Now, when it comes to phenomenal-ness, we have a phenomena here with us in the studio. And that is the great, awesome, amazing, spectacular, ineffable Mike Carson. He's looking around like now, like, <laughs> oh like who am I talking about? Well, he's, he's a friend of the show and actually a friend who might, I have to go out and celebrate his birthday. We've been talking about this for months and it's all my mistake. So again, <laughs> I apologize to him and we will do that hopefully within the next few weeks. So welcome to the show, Mike Carson. Well, thank you, Dr. Levi. It's good to be back. Well, glad to have you here. With I mean, this man. is the first time here, but it's got to be back on your show. Absolutely. We're happy yeah. to have you. So what have you been up to so late? Tell you know, about that. well, fitness has been, of course, my passion. So of course. For, last year, I, I did um, my project called Fit in Seconds. Yes. It's a, a pre-meal workout that I've developed. And for 11 months last year, I exclusively did it myself because I had a, a lot of people that have been using it to, to minimize their body fat. Yes. They've been losing fat month after month, but they said, well, you don't need to lose fat. What does it do for you if you're an right. athlete? So for 11 months, I did six minutes a day of activity. Right. One day a week, I did teach my class that I created for Equinox, but of just course. six minutes a day, and I maintained 5% body fat for the entire year. It's fantastic. I did lose one and a half pounds of mass. Ah, uh, yes, yes. But I was lifting seven hours a week of, of weight resistance training, That's and I replaced that with 35 minutes. Right. And I only lost a pound and a half over the course of the How year. How are you feeling throughout the course of those 11 months, though? 
more energetic than usual. And right. here's the reason why. What Can I tell you what Fit in Seconds is yes, all about? Yes, let's hear about it. So Fit in Seconds is a, it's a product that I've been using for myself for about 12 years with my clients for about a decade. And it's now just been released to the public for about a year now. Yes. And it's a video program, right? They can get this on exactly. like their laptop, it, their smartphones. Right. When you order this product, it comes directly to your phone, your smartphone, your tablet, your computer. So it's always right there with you. Yes. And what it is, it's a 90-second workout. Okay. And people say, well, how can a 90-second workout affect your body? Right. Well, it's about the timing of this 90 seconds. So when we're hungry, yes, and there's a chemistry change in our body, there's a shift when we're hungry. And you've been there before when you're hungry and you're doing something. You can't focus on anything because you need to focus on food. Right. Pre-civilization, before we had restaurants, supermarkets, and refrigeration, we had that signal come to us as, as primal people. And right. all of a sudden, we knew that we had to hunt and gather for food or die. Yes. Now, we're in a hungered state when we did that. So that was the key, that your body is in a chemistry for hunger. And what that does, and they've proven, is it focuses you better for hunting. Even okay. though you're low blood sugar, you need food, yes. your body is better at focus to getting food for your survival. Of course. So what Fit in Seconds does is it replicates that hunt that right. you would do when you're hungry. Then you immediately ingest the food within 15 minutes after the Fit in Seconds routine. Just like you would in the wild if you were hunting and gathering, you would immediately ingest the food. Okay. And there are four amazing things that happen. First is immediate fat loss. Okay. You lose between one and three ounces of fat every time you do this cycle. This Again, this cycle, you're doing this every day, correct? You're doing this every day, multiple times. Okay. You will do it one to three times a day. We had some people do it four times a day, and you have to be hungry when you do it. So you do and, it before and each time, Michael, they're doing this for six minutes. No, each no, time? 90 seconds. 90 seconds. I did it six okay. minutes for the entire day. Got it. Yeah, so I would do four sometimes. Um, yes. Just because I'm, I'm athletic and I wanted to, to, to maximize my, right. my energy output. Um, but what it did for the people that have done it and have purchased it, you have a question? Yeah, you know what? One thing, too, now, as you're explaining this, you know, for myself as a physician, as a, as a surgeon, really as a scientist, I want to hear about the science of fit in seconds also. Yeah. I want you to tell me about the studies so that as our listening audience, as they're getting this, I want them to know what's the science of fit in seconds and why it's so effective. Well, let's go right to the medical part then. Because sure. the thing that I find that is... The most impressive part of this system, which is something that we stumble upon, luckily, uh, there was a study done in New Zealand and Australia about diabetes. Okay. And their study was that they would do one minute of focused exercise for 90% of your potential of fitness. So if you're someone that's not, you know, if you're, your 90% is different than the average person's 90%. Right, right. So you do it at your 90%, and then you eat within 30 minutes after doing that one minute twice a week. Okay. They showed that the diabetes type 2 in these individuals that participate in the study disappeared. Really? And the reason why is because when you're hungry and you do this movement and you eat the food, you've told your body that you're in a survival mode. Okay. So the sugar that's been put into your blood, which is sugar-rich blood is what causes the diabetes. Of you course, yeah, yeah, it's glucose issues. But when you do this when you've done hunger, movement, and then eat, right. the sugar from your blood gets drawn into your muscles to be used for energy because you've told your body that you need to be able to survive. Right. So the thing that happens, first, you lose fat. Second, your body curbs the amount of food that you're going to eat because this other primal reaction in our body is that when we were eating food pre-civilization, yes. we, we could be taken away by predators ourselves. Of course. So you'd register being full faster. Right. So you're eating food for fuel, not for satiation. It's a whole different thing. It's not right, so it's versus predator versus prey. Exactly. So you become prey when you're eating because you're in a, in a, in a vulnerable situation. Of course. And all the blood goes into your digestive tract, and there's less ability for you to, to move and, and protect yourself. Yes. So the amount of food that you would eat depends on how much time that you are prey. Yes. And your body registers it faster. Okay. The other thing it does, because these movements that we do in these 90-second workouts, they're specific. I am doing rotational movements for the core and lengthening movements that help to reshape your body. And this is a great thing because when you do this, once again, it's got to be hunger, movement, and then eat. Yes. When you do it this way, you tone the muscles you just used that they hunted and helped capture that food for you. So they right. need to be improved immediately to be better at hunting. Got it. So one of the things I did last year for myself was I would spot train my shoulders, spot train my back. If I wanted to have bigger shoulders at the end of the week, I did three workouts in one day for my shoulders. The next day they grew because I told my nervous system that they helped me hunt, yes. capture, and enabled me to eat this food and provide for myself and others. Okay. Now I want to know about when you're, when you're not... I have so, love a lot of questions. I know. This, is, okay, this stuff yeah, opens yeah. a, a bunch. So, yeah, it's a lot. So I want to know, what the, the exercise that you're doing, are these very aerobic activities? Are they more isometric, isotonic exercises? What what are they? Because in my mind, I want to know, how am I going to get my metabolism up if I'm doing a static movement? Right. This is These are what I would consider cardio, full body motion movements. So, so they're dynamic. They're dynamic. And, and, and basically, you're using your upper, lower, and middle body 
every time that you do this. There are usually three to four movements that are in the 90 seconds. Okay. And they will all address opening, lengthening, and twisting. So every time you do this, you'll find that, you know when you work out, you get like a little adjustment in your back or your shoulder, things go into place that were out? Yes. Every time you do this, you find that you've restructured yourself in a way that makes it so you feel like you've gotten the stress out, yes. the pain out. So the people that used it found that they slept better. They had less stress. Uh, my The people that use it that are my clientele, they'll often do it before a large meeting or a presentation yes. after getting off an airplane because it clears your whole body's Cloggedness. Right. It, so it so it, it's, it's sort of like a, 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 a. It sounds like it's like a, a focus cleanse to get your body to really maximize its own potential. You know, and for yourself, you know, I mean, you have celebrity clients, you have everyday people who are clients also. Right. Even though I know you treat everybody like they're a celebrity, which is a great thing. You know, who do you see as having the greatest benefit from this type of? program do you think it can benefit anybody with the body or do you think this benefits more of an athletic person or non-athletic well here's the great thing yes you, you hit on something it does benefit everybody and okay. the reason why and, and the, the, the largest purchaser last year because of the the, the media that we were on were an older demographic so yes 50 to 75 were the people that were purchasing it i created it for age five to 45 yes so there's this window of, of people that everyone can do it and so when i tell people that m might be as fit as we are right there are three movements in the workout i want you to do the movements to the best of your ability and if you do six squats compared to my 10 that's okay just change movements when i change movements and you do the same routine for an entire week okay. and then you're sent a new one each monday so you re uh, re-energize the firing pattern of your muscles and okay. you continue to burn more calories and reshape the body. And it also would take out the boredom because as you oh, were yeah. saying it, I was thinking, oh, if I want to do the same movements every day, I know me. Within like three days, that's going to be over. Well, you're here's the thing, too. And that. you're right. And, right. That's, and not only that, your body gets more used to doing movements. Accustomed like, to that. Like, Adaptability. And you'll burn less calories. Yeah, of course. So after about eight or nine days, so the first time you do it, you're not burning as many calories. Right. After about two or three days, you're getting better at the movement, so you're now engaging more and getting better at doing it. Yes. By the time that your body gets to the point where it might start to burn less calories, you've right. got a whole new routine. I think that's so, a great way to so do it. So your body never gets too Accustomed. used to it. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it's always about changing the adaptability of the body so that it can maximize itself via the metabolism of your body, as well as your muscle strength and muscle flexibility overall. Yes. Great way. And here's the other thing it does. We work out very hard. And yeah, we every do have day. To, and we have to recuperate from that. Yes. This type of workout gives you a much faster recuperation and taps into your system without having to wear yourself out. So there are those people that might, you know, you and I work out quite a bit. and I, I Every what, day. I'm working out now. I've added back my fitness again. I just started about four days ago now. I'm doing every other day an hour of weight resistance training. Okay. But on the off days, I'm doing three fit and seconds workouts. So this is a supplement to my fitness routine. This keeps me lean. This keeps me uh, creating uh, growth hormone for my pituitary gland naturally. It keeps me from having... I've never had caffeine in my life, so right. I, I don't need caffeine because I give myself a natural burst of energy. Right. So this gives you that extra added bit without having to add nutrients that are negative, that will drain water from you. A lot of people depend on coffee, depend on Red Bull, depend on five-hour energy. Those things tell your body to stop creating its own natural energies. To give you the energy out of a bottle, out of a glass. You know, we need water. That's what we oh, need. I agree and We that. need nutrients from natural foods. You know, a glass of water with some lemon squeezed in it is going to be far more beneficial for you than Gatorade. Oh, you got that right. You know? No, I want to hear about, what about food with respect to this fit in seconds? What's the... What's your 411 about food and diet? Because, you know, when it comes to fitness, it's often we say in medicine is 80% diet yeah. and 20% exercise. So tell me about fit in seconds, how it reflects that. Well, here we did a couple study groups, and this was our, our position on it. We wanted to make sure that when you started this, we told them that we want you to make some dietary changes. The first week, we're not going to give you any suggestions. We want you to do what you normally have been doing. Right. With the reasoning that... What happened is what happens is when you do this, you will make some choices on your own because of the way you're feeling that better improve your your your, your nutrition without being forced. Exactly. But then we started to, to give them some suggestions. Well, here's my, my my main suggestion to people is you need to have protein and fat with each meal. Okay. Each meal or snack. And the reason why is protein we don't store. And if we are not eating protein. We're going to take it from our muscle tissue that exists in our body, our hair, our skin, our nails, all the parts of our body we want to keep strong. But if it takes it from us, we begin to weaken our own structure. Right. And immune system. Too. And our immune system as well. So everything is in a strong. So fat we need because fat does not make us fat. Fat lubricates our joints. It lubricates our body and it also slows down the absorption of the carbohydrates that we're eating. So okay. 
if you're not going to have fat, your carbohydrates spike your blood and you have that sugar-rich blood again, which the fit and seconds can combat a little bit, but it also creates inflammation, which makes digestion harder. So my, my thing is, is you want protein and fat and carbs with every meal. So fit and seconds is really about uh, helping someone to have a, a low inflammatory type response in their body. So it's about... Alkalining eating. the system. Okay, that's what I was going to... Yeah, you got it. That's what it is. You got it. And, and if you can do that consistently... Your body is in always a better state of health. Right. The immune system is stronger. The digestive tract is stronger. And there's less inflammation globally in the body. And, you're f and, and you've seen people that once looked fantastic and now look puffy and look swollen. Oh, yeah, we've seen that. Yeah, and, and it's alcohol, it's nutrition, yeah. it's lack of water most right. of the time. And right. your body will begin to hold water when you don't provide it. Yeah. You know, as you say that, you know, I've always thought that one of the number one problems that we have in America is dehydration. Oh, yeah. Dehydration and constipation. Mm -hmm. You know, so not getting enough water in, not getting enough fiber, therefore holding on to toxins and things that the body really wants to get rid of, but it can't do it efficiently. Yeah. So it holds on to it. And the chemistry changes in your body when you're in that position. So your body's metabolism will slow itself down. Oh, of course. Of and course. then what happens? Your body is not efficient. You're burning less calories. Right. You're, you're, and everything becomes... And getting larger. Larger in the wrong way. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's okay to build your muscles and have you know strength and have your joints be focused and, and, and balanced. But when you're building inflammation... Yes, it's, it's an issue. It's, it's, it's a recipe for cancer. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want to hear about, you know, you as a person, what, what drives you to be, because you've been involved in fitness, health, and well-being now for over 25 years. Yeah. And as an innovator in this field, what drives you to really maintain this passion for doing what you do, and you do it so well? I want to hear about that. You know, thank you. It's interesting because when you know something right. and you just know it intrinsically, it's hard to ignore it. And for me, since I was a little kid and since I was just going into college, I kind of knew physically the differences between the food I would eat, the activity level that I would perform. Right. And it became a passion for me to share that with other people. I, I had a boss. I worked in production back in, in my early 20s. And he saw me work out one day and said, hey, would you mind training me? And I wasn't a trainer. Right. I hadn't even gone to, to, to take my courses yet. Right. And so I started training him and I realized I know what I'm doing better than most of the trainers just intrinsically, because I know the body. My, I was given the um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding oh, I have when that. I was 13. That's a classic. Uh, my mom's um, best friend and my godmother, Gail DeMore, gave it to me. Right. And that changed my perspective on weight resistance training in a way that it opened up my mind where I saw all of the, the, the what was mapped out, but I could see it differently as well. Like, yes. I, like I can look at your body and see the connection, see what I would do right. to, to train you. And I'm about a sequencing of events to train um, in one session as opposed to a back and biceps day or a legs right. day. Or The whole body should be trained in a system. Absolutely. And Because we're using it every day. You know, every day. What are you going to do? Back and biceps are going to save right. you? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm going to run from my... <laughs> right, right, no, no, right. no. And I mean, it's it's always been a weird thing where I see these people that have, you know, they're doing 19 <laughs> sets of biceps. It's like, well, now you couldn't, you couldn't do anything because you're so locked up. Exactly. Because bodybuilding is designed to... Flood blood into the muscles. Yes, it does that. Athleticism is about to have it flow evenly yeah, through the body. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So my goal is to create athletes of all ages. Right. Yeah. Anyone who really wants to be involved and strategically focus about getting fit, you yeah. want to help them. So I came out to California. Right. And uh, I was in school, and I needed a job, and I ended up seeing an ad at UC in UCLA Bruin for a front desk person at a place called Robix. You okay. And I decided I'll go check it out, and it was an aerobic studio. And so I get a job at the front desk. And ironically, it's like two months before Reebok came out with the step. Right. And I'm working at the front desk, and the guy that works there knows I don't like to do the high kicking type of right, right. female focused aerobics was kind of looked at. Mm -hmm. Because we got this new thing called bench training, right. and you might want to try it. And so I go into the focus group with them, and I you know cut to future. I help launch the the step, the power step. Yes. And I work for Kathy Smith at a place called Mesoplex. And yes. I become the top. Top guy there, yes. And for me, it was basically just doing what I like to do. Right. It came easy. and Because you love doing it. This is your passion. I love it. And right. to be able to talk and walk and move and make people do things all at the same time is awesome. So right. rather than just training one person, I was training 40, 50 at the same time. Right. So it became something where I, I go, you know, I really like this because I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not, it's something if you're, if you're lying, if you're, you know. If you're not authentic. If you're full of it. Yes. Yeah, and I have never been full of it. Right. So it's like I've, I've. That's why I think I've stayed in this this career because even though it's hard, as you know, because you have patients and clients, because you're also a trainer, to get people to do what's best for them. Yes, it is. Um, 
I had my whole life trying to get my father to do the best for him. He's right. passed away now, but that was my, I think that's what's given me this strength, this strength and position to be a provider of information right. because I, you know, so desperately wanted him to take care of himself. So I look at the world as my father. Right, <laughs> you know, right, right. I get I'm projecting that, that end yes, of the world. Yes, yeah, yes. That makes sense? It does, it yeah. does. Now, what about when you were growing up? Did you have any fitness heroes, for example, you know, were there uncles or, or, or aunts or people in your family that you looked upon and said, wow, I want to do what they're doing, and that, that inspires me? You know, it's funny. I, I didn't really have that many examples in that regard. My father was a great athlete, but he never really tested himself and put himself in any teams. But my, my uncle was a guy that never worked out, never did anything. He, he kind of looked like Gallagher with a mustache. Yes. But he would challenge um, uh, baseball players and football players to sprint. Really? And he'd beat him all the time. <laughs> he wouldn't warm up. He wouldn't run ever. And he'd he just would, do it. And he would beat him. And, right. and, and for me, and, and that, I could do that too. So for some reason, we had this same sort of fast twitch thing. I was a sprinter. And right. So my uncle, ironically, who wasn't an athlete, in fact, the opposite, inspired me to, to push a little further. But I went to day camp, um, and I had a decathlete coach as one of the counselors there. He needed a job. Yes. And that, and so he said, you know, you need to be in the Olympics in this, in the Olympics of the camp. Okay? Right. This is not right, the, right, the Olympics. Right, exactly. Olympics. And um, so I, I was entered in the Olympics, and I won every event but two events. One I didn't enter, and the other one was a kickball thing that I didn't, but I won the sprint. The, I won like 10 events. Right. And it inspired me. I was only 11 years old, and I've always been the shortest guy and the smallest guy, but I've always been the most capable. Fit guy. Capable in a way that's, you know, it's like I'm just lucky. You know, yes. I, I'm very lucky. I haven't been injured and all that stuff. So, that put me on a, on a trajectory to get involved in baseball and track and field, and I just loved it. I loved right. the team aspect. So it's multiple athletic disciplines. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm, I'm horrible. If you tell me, you know, you're a, a Green Bay Packers fan, uh, give me five people on the team, I'm not going to be able to tell you. Right. I'll tell you how to, to run a play. Right. <laughs> right, know? right. But I don't know any of the players, you know. Right. Uh, you know, that was something my, my, another thing, my father was really good. He knew every stat, every player, and I just didn't. Right. And, and it's, so that part eludes me. I'm an athlete, but I'm not one of those, I can't sit down and, and rah-rah with everybody. I feel bad a lot of times because they know every stat. I'm like, right. how do you know this stuff? Right, right, right. You know, and why are, and I see that they have a punch. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, it's like, well, you, I see, you're not, you're not. You're not doing anything. Yeah, you know, right. you know a lot, but, you know, you might die before they do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you exactly. want to know their stats after right. they're, after they're gone? Right. What about their stats? Right, right. So and so that led me to um, teaching, like I said, a, a fitness classes and a man named Mark Burnett, um, right. who you've heard of from reality TV. Oh, of course, of course. He was a member there, and he used to watch me teach classes and take my class. And his wife at the time, Diane, would take my class, and and then I would train someone. And he said, you know, I, I discovered this three hundred mile team endurance race, and no one's ever done it that's been American. Would you want to join the team? We'd have to try and raise money. And so we did. We, we Big deal. raised money. We got Bum Sports, Paul Mitchell, a bunch of other sponsors, uh, random checks from different clients. And we did this 300-mile team endurance race in, in Oman in the Middle East. It's a big deal. We didn't finish, but we did go nine days right. and kick our butts. I, I was... I. I quit nine days in. We were taking off the course nine and a half days in after we, wow. we had some infighting. But nine days out there. Still a long time. Yeah, we were riding horses, camels, uh, ocean, kayaking, Shh. canyoneering, stuff that... So this was not fitness, though. This was a metaphor for life. Right. This was a struggle in a way that was about trying to prove... In a way, I was doing it because I didn't want to have a real job. I thought this would make elevate me to an ESPN hosting level. I'm a fitness guy. I'm an ultra endurance right. guy. Da, da, da. You know, I had all these dreams. Right. <laughs> you know, the reality is, I'm walking for hundreds of miles, right. getting thinner. I look like baby Jesus at the end of it. <laughs> right. No one's looking for that. Right. You know, we were on prime ticket, and you know, and, and and the one voice bite that I remember the whole thing is that you know, after I was taken off the cross, I go, you know, I just didn't want to be with that p group of people anymore. And I was right. like, oh, that's great. You know, that's <laughs> that's nice support. You know, right, right, you're in right, a right. half of training, and then I'm saying, you know, I just don't like. <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> so there are things you can make that, you know, you could put a grand, huge amount of oh, effort of in. They teach you life lessons but can almost kill you. Of course. And I try now sharing those experiences without people having to go and experience them, them, them for themselves if they don't physically want to or right. they can't. Right. So I'm there for that. So I am looking, and you said, you know, who, who do you look up to? I look up to the people that are looking to me. Exactly. Because they go, you know, when they're, if they believe in me, when someone believes in me and listens to me and gets the result, there's nothing that feels better. Oh, it's better than my result. Yes. It's yes. like, wow, you, 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 you accepted, you did it, you took the, you know, the, the steps necessary. Right. And every time you, and I, and I promise you, 
if you listen to me, <laughs> my clients, when they do, they always get the results they want. Which is a great thing. Yeah. It's just that the struggle to get the people to listen continues. Which is a great thing. Yeah. Now, what, are you working on any other products right now? Actually, yeah. I've got a, a real exciting product. You know, you and I are very military-based. Right. We, we, we are, support actually. the military. Yes, you know, we, we do. Remember yes, we, we were do. doing the, you know, oh, our yeah, the pull-ups? Right, right, right. I was wearing the Marine <laughs> right, shirt, exactly. but you know, i got to promote fit in seconds. But um, I'm working with a product called Arc Energy. It's I like a, that name. Yeah, Arc Energy. And it's a cool-looking logo. It's A-R-C-N-R-G.com, Arc okay. Energy. And what it does is enables everybody to do a perfect push-up. No matter what their size, their weight, their fitness level? Every size, fitness level, because it adjusts. It's, a, it's an actual, like a teetering system that puts you in the exact perfect angle to make it so you can do a push-up. And if you're already fit, mm -hmm. you can now do push-ups in directions and positioning to, to contour your chest and to work your core muscles in a way that you couldn't if you were doing regular push-ups because so, you'd get tired. So you, this... This device, then you can do more difficult, more advanced, more elite push-ups. Yes, like yes. And you can do, it's great because you can go from one type of a push-up to another without having to change mm. the position of your body, just your arms, and you're hitting the chest and the core in a different way. You're right. hitting five muscle groups when you're doing the push-ups. Huh. And this enables the person who might not be able to do it at the level that you and I can right. to work up to it. So if you're and, a and knee push-upper, you can do it. You can do it. Now, this is a, is a website for that? Yes, Arc it's Energy. Arc Energy. It's Arc Energy.com, A R C N R G.com. You can put a dash between the arc and the energy, but you don't have to. It'll still come up. And what about Fit in Seconds? Is there a Fit in Seconds.com? Yes, Fit in Seconds. It's F I T in Seconds.com. And the thing that you want to do is you, you want to get yourself the three, six, or, or year long package. Any one of them are going to provide you what you need. The, the, the three months, you get 12 routines. Every week for 12 weeks, you'll shrink. And I guarantee you, and you're hearing this from my voice. Right. If you do two to three a day, only two to three a day over the course of 30 days, you're going to lose seven to eight pounds of fat if you need to lose it. That will, that's a guarantee. That's a that guarantee. Will you will lose more most likely if you do three a day. Yes. But that has been the average. We did two focus groups with several, several people a year apart from each other. That was the exact result each time. Between mm -hmm. seven and eight pounds was the average weight loss for the individuals doing it. We had much more. We right. had a little bit lower for people that were closer to my body still fat. still the average. The average was over seven pounds every 30 days. And even my, my, my close college buddy who did this and we were uh, partners in the project for a while, he lost 77 pounds in exactly 11 months. So it was exactly, and he's kept it off for six years. That's great. And it's easy. You don't have to have equipment. You don't, I'm never going to ask you to go, okay, now you've done the 90 seconds for, for two weeks. Now you're going to do three minutes don't have to. You can if you want, right. but you don't need to to get the results. So, they're, they're, again, fit and sex is using your body weight to get you to the place you want to go with respect to losing weight and contouring your body. Right. Think dance, martial arts, gymnastics, uh, athletic movements. All of those movement patterns are built into the moves that I use for these workouts. So we're building an athletic you, a yes. dancer you, someone that can be moving through space with confidence as opposed to just bulking up and making right. you sore. Right, a fit yeah. you. A fit you. You know, speaking of a fit you, what are maybe like the top five things you recommend to individuals out here who've made resolutions for the year? You know, because resolutions are a really funny thing. And often they're associated with a lot of guilt, a oh, lot yeah. of uh, self-doubt, a lot of stress. You know, I want to hear your thoughts about It's that. funny because, you know, you've heard of the term giving things up for Lent. Of course. Of course, it's a big deal. People make a resolution and as they're making it, they know they're giving it up. Right. Because they know that they've chopped off too much that they can handle. And what I call it is revolution, not resolution. Right. Because I, I like that, actually. Well, Explain, that. Explain, well, that. Explain that. Well, revolutions don't last. Right. They're, they're, they're transitory. They're explosive. They're, right. they're exciting in a way, right. but they don't last because they can't. So right. every Jul June, June, every January, right. January and June, <laughs> right. every January 1st, we make these huge ovations. I'm not right. doing this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do this. And it's too much. It's a revolutionary change in your body. And, and you think it's too much for the person psychologically to see and state that? And physically. And physically. Because there's some chemical things that go on, too. I'm giving up cigarettes. Right. I'm giving up this. You know, your body is going into flux. Things right. that you, and you're now not putting in the things to replace them. You're just eliminating. Right, just stopping. Right. And so when you're eliminating those things, you know, the evolution that you need to get to where you want to go isn't happening. You're still doing that revolution resolution. You right. want to do it slowly. So I want to lose weight this year. What am I going to do? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start hydrating. Right. First thing. Every morning when I wake up, for me, I have two giant swigs of water. Right. And when you do that, you're telling your body 
to wake up, warm up. I don't have coffee, like I told you. I've never had a cup of yeah, coffee. You're not, you're not missing nothing there. No, no, no. In fact, I, I go into a Starbucks and sometimes I get a muffin to come out and I have the smell of coffee. I mean, I'm like, yeah. it's, it just feels it's weird. And mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with coffee if you like it. Trust right. me, there are people out there that... Right. They, if they like it, one cup a day is not a bad thing as we know right now. No, but Again, not to t- depend for energy. No, exactly right. Not for energy. Get some decaf. Enjoy the flavor yeah, if that's what right. you like or right. the or the or the... The romantic thought of it's you know it's a different thing because right. th- there is an adult thing to having a cup of coffee in the morning right. and enjoying your coffee. Uh, the other thing is sleep. Yes. Okay. Number two, um, that's the one I'm most guilty of: lack of sleep because my mind's constantly going and going right. and going. Thank you. We need to sleep, right. and when you sleep, your body actually recovers better from the stress you've had. Recovers from just about anything that you're that is going on in your body that you need. So to. it gets ready to actually to build itself up, to get strong, to get healthy. Yes, absolutely. And the third one is do not skip eating. Right. People think that dieting is the way to being thin. No, dieting is the way to slowing down your metabolism and making your body less able to uh, digest food and utilize those calories in a proper fashion. Right to make it less efficient. Exactly, and that's what Fit in Seconds does for you when you're hungry. You do the movement and you eat the food. The food is ingested in a whole other way. It's actually used because your body's told that you needed to survive this right. flash moment of activity. It makes it so your body actually revs up more, uses those, those nutrients better to build the muscles and give you energy so you can survive and provide. Okay. So, you, so you've got those things. Now, the other one you want to do is you want to make sure that you have friends and family that you connect with. And, and that's because you want them to have a sense of accountability, to have someone who can help them to that, reach that goal. That and the studies have been, I've read several articles just in the last week that show from teenagers to adults that when you have a close network of friends in your life and people that you count and care for, right. you're healthier. You of do course. more things for yourself. Right. You're more, you will exercise more. Because right. depression is less. Of course. Isolation is less. Right. And there's a, a, a self-awareness that becomes more important for you than it would be otherwise. Right. So being alone and being a loner is actually a detriment, especially for teenagers. Teenagers, they're saying that it's, it's a huge problem that if you are not engaging with other friends, it puts you in a, in a bad social structure for the rest of your, your young adult and adult life. Right, or because there's a lack of socialization there of how to even interact with your peers. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's really a thing. And, and the fifth one is daily movement. Right. If it's not fit in seconds, make it be something. Make it a 15-minute walk. Do something because, you know, a lot of people don't like to be told what to do, and, and, right. and I'm here telling you what to do, you right. know, in essence. I'm, of course. I'm, I'm sharing, but I'm telling you, giving you a directive. Yeah, of, of what can work. Right, what and can some people you. don't want to do that. So right. if you have your own thought about how you want to, to go about getting fit, start with a walk. Right. Start with just going up and down a couple flights of stairs. Every time you watch a TV show and there's a commercial, do 10 squats every time. I talk about that all the time. Do you? Yes, all the time. And yeah. it makes a huge difference. Yes, it yes. Ma- And people go, well, how can I make... Let's say you do it four times a night. You do 40 squats you didn't do. The blood that gets pushed down to our legs from our heart only returns to the heart through the squeeze of the muscles to get it back up there. Gravity. So we need the strength and the integrity of the leg muscles to make it better. So so that, that is... But those are my five things that I would say. No, I, I think there's a great top five because I think if our audience uh, listens to them and hears them, really applies them, it would definitely help them. You know, I, I, I think it's so important to really to look at your life, look at the body that you want, look at the health that you want to have and attain, then have those goals set. I think, number one, write them down, what you want to achieve. And realistically. It has to be realistic. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, you're not going to be, okay. Running the marathon in two weeks. Right, right. I'm going, and that's... People will tell me that all the time. You know, they'll, they'll be sick and they go, you know what? There's a half marathon next week and I'm going to do it anyway. It's no. like, why? Yeah. Because yeah. my buddy's doing it. No. Well, that's smart. He, yeah. I bet he's not going to do it if he hadn't run. And, no, exactly. and like, you know what I mean? So yeah. You, you got you to prepare and you have to have a strategic focus of how you want to get fit. Right. And I think if you, one, write it down. Two, as you said so well, be realistic about what you want to achieve. Let it be a high realistic goal, but but to shoot, shoot high. Or make smaller goals. Make an over goal. Absolutely. And then make cause small goals to get there. One of the, those races that we did, there were right. checkpoints. We had to navigate right. to go from checkpoint right. to checkpoint. So you couldn't go from here to checkpoint six while going to no, two, three, to four, and five. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. so you're skipping right. some things there. Yeah, you can't skip this. No. And one thing about life, there, there really are no shortcuts. No. You have to really look at life as a journey and make small, sustainable steps to have long-term maintained benefits and goals. Yeah. And I think if we look at life as this real wonderful race, as you had an experience of in Omar, you know, if you, as you think it's a race, 
Well, you don't want to go so quickly. You really want to go steadfast, but you want to reach the goal. I think second is be mindful about the choice that we make with respect to smoking, eating, and drinking. Yeah. Because all of those things, our bodies reflect what we do to them. I think third, to enlist family and friends and colleagues whom we trust and love who can really help us. For example, you don't want to go and work out. You say, hey, Levi, we say we work out. Say, okay, you're right. Then we'll go. Because once you have that accountability, when you don't want to do something, that other person may motivate you or vice versa. It's support and accountability. Absolutely. We need them them both. And I think the fourth is that you said so well, and I completely concur, do something every day. What I believe is that the body is a kinetic machine. It loves movement. It loves to be active. So sitting down on a couch with a remote in one hand, a beer in the other, it's not enough. We really have to honor the body because we only get one. So why not make it as fit and as healthy as possible? And I think five is to take time to reflect at the end of the day, to go to a place of real focused gratitude, really believing that today I woke up. That means my journey is not over. What have I done to be of service to other people? Not just about me, Levi. What about other people? Have I reached out to I think that's kind of our secret for for feeling. Because when I'm down, I pull myself out because I know there are other people that I'm going to be able to help. Absolutely. You know, when you're when you if you're home and depressed, you don't have something you have to do that day, and maybe just sitting around, get up, shave, take a shower, walk outside, give someone a compliment. Right. Go buy some flowers or buy a plant of some kind, and and you're going to find that it just sort of it makes a shift in your whole polar feelings. Absolutely. And Absolutely. It's important to do that. I agree. Or even just go out and volunteer. Go go, yeah. go talk to a vet. Give a vet a hug. Uh, go volunteer at a vet shelter. Go volunteer at a homeless shelter. Do something at a battered women's shelter, domestic violence. Do something outside of yourself so that your resolution is not just about me, 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 yeah. but about us as a human fabric. Because if we strengthen every thread of that fabric, we all become stronger together. Yeah. And acknowledgement and, like you said, hugging. Um, I walk down the street many times, and I say hi to everyone, everybody. You know, I, I say hello right. to anyone that's that's doing of anything. Course. And often, you know, I'll get a little upset because they're just ignoring. You know, I got to get over that part. But reach out to people. Absolutely. When you don't acknowledge your fellow man, things happen in a negative way. I mean, we just start getting closed off, and you Absolutely. see it all the time. You know, Absolutely. I, you're walking through just the, the studio here. A couple of people I said hello to, and they're you know they're tense and they're nervous about something, but just. Look someone in the eye and just yes. say hi. We're not taking anything from you. Not we're not, it's not like the American Indians thought their photos were taking their soul. Right. We're just giving you energy right. when we say hello. Right. You know? Especially, you know, you know a different situation when someone's coming up with a clipboard. <laughs> you know, you're yes. like, uh-oh, this is trouble. Yes. But that's not what I'm talking about. No, I, I, I totally get it. I think we just have to really re- respect people, even from the Native Americans who may have thought that you take a picture, you steal this. Well, we respect that. If they yeah. believe that, we respect that. Individuals who have certain belief systems, we, we respect them, but we're asking people to do something outside of yourself. We're asking people to look at life as not just simply being about you. It's a team effort. It really is. Yeah. You know, I'll share this with you. One of the, the, the best things that happened to me a while ago was talking to a vet, uh, a veteran outside of Whole Foods, who I gave some money to, and after we talked, and I've talked about this story before, uh, at, the, at the end of our talk, I actually gave him a hug, and I held him really tight. He hugged me even tighter. So after about 30 seconds, I was kind of like ready to, you know, okay, I, I, I'm <laughs> hugged out now. Yeah. But but he was he was letting me know he wasn't hugged out from hugging me. He's got a bigger hug tank He had than a you. bigger hug, exactly. <laughs> so he hugged me longer. Then after that, I, I, I thanked him, and uh, he said, you know, thanks for looking at me as a human being. And he said, I, he, he said, you're not afraid of me? I said, no, I'm not afraid of you, you're a human being. And just the, the recognizing his humanity and mine made him have a better day, but it also made me a better person, knowing that anybody that we see, we have to really respect them as human beings. No matter their sex, their race, their creed, their sexuality, their gender, their gender identity, their socioeconomic status, that really means nothing. Yeah. What, what is important is that everybody is a reflection of ourselves. Everybody. It's so funny, you, you bringing that up and reminding me of something my father taught me when I was a teenager. He said that, and, and I don't know why, where it came from, but he said, you know, the biggest guy in the room Go up and say hello to him. Yes. And I said, why? And he goes, a couple of reasons. One, he's just as scared as everyone else in that room. That's correct. 
That's He's correct. scared of everybody. That's correct. And you will make him feel disarmed. Right. And then you have an ally and the biggest guy in the room. <laughs> <laughs> all those, those are all yeah. true statements. Yeah. So, so it's like, and, and so I would do. So I was in Vegas by myself once. Right. I was working on a. Um, I went there to do a Chippendales project that never yeah. never got to, off the ground, fortunately, because right. I would have to kick my shirt off a lot more. <laughs> and, Mike, and I'm, please. Well, I'm walking through the the, the lobby, and there's right. this group of. They were Asian and black and white. It was like a whole group of like just gangster rappers. Right. All right. of them. I mean, the big chains and everything. Right. And they're just staring at me, giving me this look because I'm by myself walking through the, the Rio and I'm looking like prey. Right. So I said, you know, I don't want to be prey. This is 10 o'clock at night and it's Friday and I'm here by myself. I don't want to be prey. So I wheel around yeah. and I beeline right towards them. Right. All of them. And they're looking at they're looking at each other for a second because I'm walking right towards like, <laughs> like, like, um, like I'm in Troy. I'm business. like, I'm Brad Pitt in Troy. <laughs> looking right at the guy. So I'll walk right up to the, the gang leader. Right. And I said, What's going on here? Is there any parties going on? I mean, this place seems so like it's dead. And he right. looks at me and goes, I, I don't know, man. I'm, we're just here. We're just hanging out. <laughs> and, and so all of a sudden, I completely flipped it on them. You disarmed yeah, everybody. Yeah, they're like, what is he, a cop? Is he a... Is he a th- what is he? I, said, I said, well, guys, if you figure out something fun to do, I want to be over at the roulette table, let me know. <laughs> right. And I walked away, and I was like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, I was... I you're, was a master of my own domain, right, exactly. and I was no longer prey. No, and I had a no. great night. So, exactly. but, but I could have just gone, you know, mousy and right, not no. said a thing. And no, no. I, I took the took the pit sweat and went right for it. <laughs> we, we have to do that. Yeah, I, I think really this year is about that. This year is about living fearlessly mm. and really like taking life the way it comes, and then doing what we can to sculpt the lives that we want, sculpt the bodies that we want, yeah. sculpt the relationships that we want. And I think we do that by being in a place of fearlessness and not thinking about what other people say, what they think. It really doesn't but mean But not much. thanklessness. Oh, no, not Constantly thankfulness. thankful. <laughs> Dude, you know, my favorite word is gratitude. Yeah. I mean, I, I live by that word. I think that that word to me is the epitome of what life is about, of going to that place of thankfulness for everything, for the good and the bad, because the bad makes us even more grateful for the good when it comes. And when we're grateful for the good, it gives us a chance to open the door for greater good, to go from good to better to best. You know, now what's the legacy you want to leave behind when we talk about Mike Carson, the great ineffable Mike Carson, the phenomenal Mike Carson, you know, how do you sum up what you want to leave with respect to fitness, health, and well-being? Wow, that's uh, probably want to think about it a little more to give you the, the true answer. But I think that helping people in a way that makes them feel loved, yes, and not challenged and broken down, and not judged, n- n- not judged more than anything, because right. see, I really don't judge. I mean, I, I'll judge people in the fact that. It, can they handle my level of energy that I want to bring them? Right. And I'll adjust where I am and adjust how I just talk to people because of perspective. Right. But I don't judge people on who they are. You know, I'll, I'll know exactly where to, how to approach it because I want everyone that works with me to understand what I'm trying to get across to them simplistically. Not, I'm not trying to show you how smart I am compared to you. I'm not trying to show you how complicated I, a, a system I've created to make your life better. No, it's simple. The oldest fitness system is survival. Yes, our is. hands, our bodies were given to us to provide us to get food and to protect ourselves and give us shelter. And that's what my workout does. And I want people to go, he broke it down. Right. He got it back down to the basics. And I lived a lot longer because of him. And a lot healthier. Happier. Right. That's the same thing. Well, I got to tell you, you know, we're really fortunate today to have the great Mike Carson with us <laughs> and Thank really you. reminding us how to live a life of true well-being, how to do that unapologetically. And how to know and understand that we all have gifts. And his gifts, of course, are, are really tremendous as a motivator, as a trainer, as a speaker, as an entrepreneur. I mean, he's someone whom I truly trust and someone I appreciate be able to actually say he's a friend and someone that I know is actually making the world a better place. I just want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to, you know, to fly in here to be with us on a, on a rainy, rainy day like this in beautiful Los it's Angeles. It's a rare rainy day in it's Los Angeles. A, exactly. It's a rare, rainy, cold day yeah. in Los Angeles, you know. So I want to thank you, Mike. And I want to remind all of our listening audience that they can go to Mike's website, which is fitinseconds.com, and the other is ARC Energy, A-R-C-N-E-R-G-Y. Actually, it's N-R-G. Or any yeah, it's, it's arc energy a r c n r g dot com. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, you can join him there and you can interact with him. He's always available, you know, to do speaking engagements, to come out and give demonstrations. If you want a phenomenal trainer, a phenomenal motivator, Mike Carson is the guy you want to call. 
who, whom else? He's just a phenomenal person. And he's also about giving. I had the opportunity to work with Mike at the International Special Olympics this summer, and he was just the, uh, he was there, he was available, he was giving, he was just phenomenal. So I want to thank you for your service there, too. That was an enlightening experience. Wasn't it? It was, I mean, the the natural joy and love. Yes. I mean, because that, that's what athleticism is. It really is that. It's, the, the, the thrill of competing doesn't matter if you win or lose. No. It's, it's how you feel. Right. And you show up. Oh, and, yeah. And did you see the love? Did you, did you get this shift in this paradigmatic shift, I want to say, in understanding that how people tell you, oh, Mike, you're going to go and give a lot to the athletes. Did you see how much the athletes give to you? Oh, I drove home wishing, I go, how do I absorb all of this? <laughs> exactly. You know, because literally exactly. it was floods of uh, right, thousands right, of right. people in a day. Right, right, right. You know, and a couple of them would catch your eye. And, right. you know, the Samoans, I don't know if you remember Yeah, the I met with some of those guys. The, the, the biggest guy, he right. came up to me and put his hand on my shoulder, and, and, and I was like, whoa. And, 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 and we became friends for the whole time. Really? We, yeah, we knuckle, we didn't really speak much, but every time we see him, we'd hug and a knuckle, and it's like, you know, he just... I really made some friendships there. Yes, yes. Yeah, including yours, of course. Oh, man, we're, we're friends for life, dude. But, you know, the, the love there in the Special Olympics is really just, uh, <sighs> there's nothing like it. I wish I, it was more often. I. It's a lot of work. But I, mean, I would say that, too. It's a yeah, lot of work. Let yeah. me just say that. It's a great experience, but, you know, Easy to say I want it more often. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> it's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> yeah. Very dynamic. Yeah. You know, I just want to say, uh, I want to thank Michael Carson for being with us today. And, again, his website is fitandsex.com. And the other one, Mike, again, Arc, Arc Energy, A-R-C-N-R-G.com. Fantastic. Well, Mike is available for, for speaking for anything. You want a great guy. He is the man. I want, I want to thank everyone for being with us today. I want to talk a little bit about relationships. And, you know, as Mike and I talked earlier about how important it is to be healthy on the inside, well, part of being healthy on the inside is about our relationships. So we have to really take an authentic look at the people that are in our lives, the men and women in our lives, our husband, our wives, our partners, and we have to ask ourselves, are they uplifting? Are they making me feel better about myself? Do they support my dreams, my, my aspirations? Are they more complimentary? Do they provide constructive, authentic criticism about things I need to hear? Uh, do, you have, do you fear them? Are you afraid of them? Do you not speak to them because you think they may, they may slap you, may abuse you? Well, guess what? If you're in a relationship where you're under that type of abuse physically, financially, or emotionally, then guess what? I think you owe it to yourself this year in 2016 to say, you know what? I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to be fit on the outside. I'll be fit and healthy. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work out. Or I'm going to stay at home. I'll do fit in seconds. I'll get fit. I'll get healthy. And I'm going to look at the relationships in my life, and I'm going to let the ones that are great continue to get better. And the ones that are not great, I'm going to let them go away. So we have to sometime lovingly love people by proxy and from a distance. And sometimes we have to let them know that I will not allow you to treat me that way. Because remember, people only treat us the way we allow them to. So if someone is treating you disrespectfully, if someone is taking away your pride in yourself, if someone is making you feel less than, if someone is making you feel like you don't belong and that you will never make it and that you could never do it without them and that you need them, well, guess what? You really don't need them. <laughs> when you came out of your mom's wound or belly, <laughs> guess what? You didn't come with them. You came alone and naked to the world. And guess what? You've learned to be fearless. So I want you to... Get back your joy of life. I want you to feel good about yourself. I want you to know that the most important relationship that you can have is the one with yourself. So feel good about you, love you, appreciate you. And whatever you do spiritually, take time to either meditate or pray, whatever works for your life. But I want you to really look at your relationships. I mean, really look at them and think when you call someone, do you always get the decline phone? You have to leave a message. Do they call you back? Do you feel, when you call people, do you feel like they really want to talk to you? Or do you call people, when you talk to them, you feel like you've given out so much energy that you feel tired, you don't feel good about it? Well, guess what? Don't call them. You know, or when someone calls you, they make you feel badly about your life, about your, your choices. I want you to really look at your life, and I want you to do what's right for you. I believe you can do it. I think you have the strength. I think you have the boldness. I think you are fearless, and I believe that you can do it. But guess what? You have to do it. You know, I'm, I'm your biggest cheerleader, but guess what? You take you wherever you go. So you can look at this on the archives and hopefully it'll pep you up and remind you. But I want you to feel good about you. So 
2016 is about great relationships. It's about getting fit in seconds. It's about knowing that you're, you take you wherever you go. So why not take a happy, healthy, fit, relaxed you? Why not know and understand that prosperity is your birthright? Why not know and understand that life will get better and better for you every day if you live in a place of ever-expanding gratitude? Gratitude is my, it's my word of the year for 2016, and most likely for 2017, 2018, 2019. <laughs> Gratitude is the word. So I really want to thank our incredible guest today, Mr. Mike Carson, a great friend, a great human being. He's someone who really intensifies and fortifies the fabric of humanity, making that blanket more eclectic, more beautiful, more strong. I want to thank our engineer today, Jarvis, an extraordinary guy who always makes a difference. You know, he actually makes Mike and I look and sound good. If you heard us in person, you say, ooh. Yeah, what a mess. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. As Mike said, you say, what a mess. <laughs> so I really want to thank Jarvis for being the, uh, being here with us. Just a great guy, and uh, he really helps us. And, of course, I want to thank my manager, Janet Rodriguez. She makes a difference. You know, yes. she, I could not do without her and about with, with, with her and Molly. They make our day. And I also want to thank one of my patients, uh, Victoria. I, 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 her last name, I would say Victoria H., Victoria is a fantastic person, and uh, she's been losing weight and getting fit, and I want to thank her for all the great gifts that she left yesterday and, and so many times. I want to thank Victoria for, for doing what you can to make the book, The Art of Fitness, a part of your daily lifestyle. I think it's wonderful. I want to thank all our YouTube subscribers. Right now, we're almost at 12,000. Our goal, of course, is 1.5 million, and guess what? We're going to surpass that easily. So I want to thank you for being involved, and don't forget our website is Dr. Levi Harrison. Dot com and YouTube is the same and Instagram Instagram and all the other social platforms they're all the same and what about Mike your your Facebook is Facebook what? is uh, Michael Carson uh, is you know I don't it's got some number at the end of it but you you can Google me Michael Carson Fant and they can get you at fitnessx yeah and there's Michael Carson Fitness as well fantastic and Twitter is double O Michael Carson fantastic yeah. double O Michael Carson you heard that the great enough for Michael Carson this is Dr yeah. Levi you know I want to thank you and uh, again happy happy New Year. I'm being told to wrap it up right now, <laughs> so I want to thank you all and enjoy 2016 and know that you matter. All right. Take care, everybody. Don't forget, be kind to the veterans, those great men and women. They, they've helped us sustain our, our freedoms here, so I love the veterans. Support the USO. Support the Veterans Administration. God this is Dr. Levi. Bye.